Welcome. Uh, this is Bill Foote, and I am the instructor for Decision Modeling with Spreadsheets, the MBA core course uh, 617. Here is a syllabus uh, for fall 2022 already. Uh, revised it last uh, last Monday. It'll be posted. Uh, this whole uh, uh, segment will be posted on YouTube and the syllabus. You'll have all of that available um, uh, through Moodle and also through my GitHub site. And you have uh, some details down here. Here's some contents. Uh, my office hours are uh, 1.30 to 2.30. Well, actually, they had to change. They are actually uh, going to be 12.30 till 2. I have a class at apparently uh, 2 o'clock, so... If you want to come to that class, it's very similar material to this, um, and that's um, uh, in DLS 209. Beautiful production room, by the way. Uh, the syllabus goes through several aspects. It's basically the charter among us as a learning community, as a microcosm of the whole learning community. Uh, you're all going to be online. This is an online course. It's delivered 100% remotely. Uh, I will uh, have some live sessions, as I'll explain. Uh, we have a simple course description. Uh, but read the premise and what I call a manifesto for the course. Uh, it's a chain of reasoning uh, that leads us into how we look at uh, what Aristotle called the efficient cause, in this case of a decision, how we how we get to a decision. And it actually only looks at one aspect of how we get there. Um, feelings, will, heart, all that are not included in this. Uh, the course does not go through this. It goes through the logic of decision making. And math is a representation of a lot of that logic. Uh, deductive uh, 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 and inductive, statistical and deterministic. We're going to work with those sorts of models. Uh, it's, it's kind of a gentle walk through this. It's, it's rigorous, yes, but it's not not um, uh, a horribly difficult walk. It 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 will map back to um, at least shreds of fragments of shards of of ways in which we all make decisions at all times, not just intuitively, but when we have the opportunity uh, and we're not in the breach to uh, sit back and reflect. Surprise, outliers, and disruption are often the reasons why we have to make a decision. We're put into a situation and we have to react. Well, of course, we can also make decisions to correct situations, to be proactive, prevent certain situations occur and take advantage of other th situations to promote whatever it is, is the goal of uh, the decision. And the goal of the decision is another Aristotelian idea called the final cause. Uh, why are we here? It's the purpose of the decision. Why are we are here? That's a much bigger question, of course. Uh, but why are we here making this decision? Uh, the learning goals down through here, these verbs are critical. They're going to animate just about everything we do in the course. Posing business questions. Modeling causal influences. Simulate until <laughs> morale improves, until we drop, until there's no more time. We're going to do a lot of simulation exercises. Um, in the beginning, we're going to call those sensitivity analyses. Uh, the sensitivity, when aligned with how often a sensitivity event can occur, becomes a, uh, uh, a simulation. It's layering on another bit of intelligibility. And we're going to assume everything's intelligible. We just haven't gotten there yet. But everything is intelligible and aligned. Align inferences with decision alternatives. Well, I mean, if, if you're acting in a way inconsistent with what you know, uh, that's a problem. Uh, it's a responsibility problem. 
uh, in religious terms, uh, uh, just about every religion calls that sin. Uh, but uh, we often do that, often because we just go off on a different tack, a different tangent than what our knowledge tells us is probably plausibly the right way to do it. Now, now our knowledge is not just intellectual. Our knowledge is also the uh, knowledge of our consciousness of situations of people and so on. So, but it, okay, we, we will come back to those issues. Deploy. Okay, this is going our, our our platform that we're using is uh, Microsoft uh, 365, which is available uh, for free uh, and downloadable simply because you're part of this program. Uh, and it is a tradition of design principles. I want to, I should have bolded that because uh, I was only bolding the verbs here. The tradition of design principles we're using is a life cycle approach. Uh, but it's also a tradition, uh, something that's handed down from human being to human being called the way we know, okay? The way we know. We don't know anything until we make a judgment that is justifiable somehow, and we have to figure out what that justifiability is in this course. Um, uh, we're going to summarize uh, experience. Uh, we're going to uh, practice uh, basically the critical thinking skills through statistical problem solving. And uh, 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 point five is pretty important. At the very end of the syllabus, there is a outline of analyst conduct. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, I've been using for years with analysts who work with and for me, uh, and uh, I found it to be a, just a, a good outline. Of, each analyst has to fill out the details of that outline for herself or himself. That's that's true, but um, it, it just it provides a skeleton for um, uh, making sure we're looking at all the aspects of being an analyst. And that's, that's an important part of what we're trying to get across in a course like this. Very complex organizations. Their environments are far more complex than that. How do we take enough of that complexity out, put enough simplicity in so that at the moment we can, we can figure out what the heck is going on, which is the official term called make it intelligible. Communicate is critical. We are making these analyses for a consumer of the analysis. A consumer of the analysis uh, is a decision maker. Or somebody who needs to be consulted, uh, legally consulted, juridically consulted, uh, morally consulted, needs to be consulted, uh, uh, needs the information or something. Uh, Failure to even begin the discussion without point six means the analysis often goes off on the wrong track, just simple as that. But it also means in the analyst's conduct, speaking truth to power, very, very tough thing, often tempered with a very strong dose of the virtue of prudence. Uh, and in my spiritual tradition, that's called discreta caritas. It's uh, discreet charity. Uh, it's, 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 again, something a lifetime to develop. But uh, we're going to learn here some tools to use, in this case, like interactive tables and, and graphs. Um, learning goals uh, also correlate with the school's learning goals, which you can read. Um, there are two required texts. One is my book for the course. This is the primary resource for the entire course. It's available. Touch that. At LeanPub yeah, for a nominal price. Uh, and this will be updated as we proceed through just the seven weeks of this course. Uh, it'll be updated as needed. If there's something in there that is unclear, I will make it clear. Update this. Uh, one price buys all of that. Okay, and forever, by the way, you'll be getting this updates here for as long as I make changes. Uh, it's an ebook. 
Um, you have to get an account with Lean Pub, which is the publisher. I do, as you can see, I do make money off of this. I use the money uh, <laughs> uh, basically to cover all the subscriptions and uh, places I have to go and uh, technology I must use to produce this course and other courses, uh, which are unreimbursed at, uh, uh, by any institution. Uh, and that, that goes a long way to defraying my own expenses. Uh, it helps. It really helps. Uh, I buy books. I probably read over 100, 100 books a, a year alone um, to keep up with things. Because this discipline is changing all the time, especially the environment within which we are making decisions. Here is some information about me and uh, where I've come from and uh, a little bit how I got got to this point. Um, the, uh, let's see, where is the other one? The other text, let me bring us back to the, there we go. The other text is by Wayne Winston. And he's been writing this text for a very, very, very long time. Um, this all started with another text that I will uh, post uh, by uh, Bill Orvis, um, a physicist by trade, solid state physicist, who um, in a predecessor to Excel, Excel came out around, I guess, 1994, 1995 ish and uh, became the premier spreadsheet um, product on the planet. The predecessor was Lotus 1, 2, 3. The 1 and the 2 and the 3 are calculation, database, and graphics. Those are the three things that were allowed to be doing. And literally WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Very, very great, wonderful tool. Um, the reason why PCs got sold mainly. Uh, IBM was very happy with uh, with this. In fact, they bought Lotus. Um, uh, Lotus is no longer with us. It kind of resides in Google Sheets these days. <laughs> very interesting. It is a little known industry fact. Um, uh, and uh, it doesn't do everything we need to do, by the way. Uh, not yet. Google Sheets does a lot and it's getting even more so very quickly. It's uh, exponentially increasing. That curve is going up. Um, but what, what I want to say about Wayne here is just about any, any man, almost any decision imaginable and the background for it can be found in this book. Uh, this is a compendium of like decades of adding and, and doing this and doing that and finance, marketing, operations, accounting, um, uh, plus the use of Excel or spreadsheets literally as a, as a mini database. And uh, what he doesn't do very much of, he does a little bit, is something I call spreadsheet engineering. And we're going to do a lot of that. Uh, but everybody who, I think everybody should have my book, of course, but everybody definitely should have Wayne Winston's book if you use, use a, a computer and, and you use uh, spreadsheets. End of story. That book is accessible here. The, the beauty of this one, there we go, is uh, you can see what gets price, uh, and you can get it an ebook version. Uh, is this download all? I mean, all of his worksheets are in here. You can get all my worksheets too. They're all going to be on uh, Moodle um, uh, for this course. Uh, and uh, 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 he has quite a different way of doing this. Now we're going to each each week. I'm going to ask you to pull an example out of Wayne's book and work it out and present it to the crew through a discussion board. Okay, again, an online course. Okay, so. As we, as we wander through this, I give you some pointers here about the active approach to reading anything. If you're uh, on the job, you know you're doing it 
you don't you just don't simply read that's almost skimming you almost have to have a paper and pencil nearby or some note taking or you know underlining or something to, to actively get involved in the text uh, memory works better that way uh, 100 percent better usually um, but I'll also put out some articles. There's a great article from 19, oh gosh, it must be 1913 on uh, lot sizes, uh, how many uh, how many nuts and bolts to make all at once. <laughs> we will be looking at those kinds of decisions as well, an operational decision whose goal is economic order quantity. Um, online lectures are going to be on my YouTube channel. Oh, I didn't underline that. That needs to be underlined, but there you can go. That's where it is. I have week zero. What is a decision in the first place? Yeah, they're about 45 minutes long. This is going to be about 20 some odd minutes long. Uh, uh, this will be replaced with another version of the syllabus. Uh, this is from last year and all of these are valid they're all good i'm going to be replacing a lot of these just to uh update them uh for you um oh well, that's good it finally worked i was worried that it didn't work there we go uh, you can uh go to lean pub for here uh you can go to github materials here let's see if that works nope no, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. So I'm going to have to. Uh, I am going to have to see why that did not work. Okay, you get the 404. All right. I uh, this is the first time that I have uh, my uh, uh, YouTube channels have been able to display a uh, <laughs> a working interactive. Uh, you must like me now. Um, uh, thing here, there, there's 21 videos for this course, all told. The first one is really just get your feet wet. Not even the book. Uh, I have a motto for the course. It comes from uh, a venerable tradition of uh, Thomas Aquinas and the Theologiae. He's talking in this case about religious orders, but it's really anybody making a decision about. What you do so it's, it's contemplation that's what we're going to do a lot of and reflection uh but it doesn't work until you share it that's the idea so anyways please subscribe um and uh tell me what you think of it oh be constructive though you can tell me you don't like it but i i, I am looking for constructive so we can help one another at remotely manhattan.edu you can get a free uh, download of just about every single Microsoft product, actually. Uh, even old Visio, um, which is a terrific uh, graphics-based um, uh, uh, database. Actually. Um, if, if you have any trouble doing this, let me know, and I can get you in contact with somebody who can help you. Uh, but we are using exclusively the Microsoft Excel platform, not Google Sheets. Uh, as I said, there are issues with Google Sheets. Now, the culture of this class is collaboration, not competition. And I know people like to be competitive here in business, and you think that's a really good thing. Okay, yes and no. Um, um, Yes, it's, it's always a race. Yeah, it's very athletic. Yes, we go into that. Uh, but uh, uh, our culture here will be collaborative. And it's how we interact with one another as groups and together in plenary, the plenary session that, that will always be uh, uh, memorialized on Moodle, um, how, how we comment with one another. And it's Ground rule is always constructive, never destructive comment, ever, ever. It's just a waste of time to be destructive. The simple, it's a mistake, and it's simply a waste of time. Be constructive. You're going to say something. I don't like this. Um, here's how I might approach it. Okay? You can do it tentatively. Uh, 
be mindful that everybody in this course is capable of doing this work, but we'll do it at different speeds, uh, different um, levels of comprehension at different points in time. That's an extremely important thing to remember working in any kind of team in any environment. And this one is now the whole, the whole point of so-called success here. That's, that's all going to be about hands on of doing the models, not just thinking about them or whatever. It, if you're doing a model, you draw it out paper and pencil. It's like the first exercise called an influence diagram. You draw things. You, and then take what you're drawing and see where the calculations are and then put them in an environment where you can do calculations and many of them of the same kind. That's a spreadsheet effect, effectively. Uh, and then plot it, look at it. Um, these are going to be the very hands-on things that we're going to be doing as teams. Okay, as teams. Uh, assessment of performance. It's just three components to it. There are no exams in this course. Every everything you do is an exam. Um, but uh, uh, we'll have uh, uh, three graded assignments uh, for the three sections of the course that you will see at sixty percent of your grade. And you can do these over and over and over again until you get it all right. The hundred percent comprehension is the goal of the graded assignment. The grade means uh, you're not there yet. Here's what else you need to do to get there. There being a, um, a complete assignment. Uh, now, uh, please be on time so that I have time to comment on it. We only have seven weeks. If you do it all at the end, uh, you will not necessarily get coveted A that you're looking for. The second one is participation through the discussions as they come up each week. And these are also skill building activities. Now, skill building activities are those um, uh, simple models from Wayne Winston. I, I, these, are, these are stretch goals in this course. Uh, and that's worth 20% of the final grade. And you can do that right up through the end. Uh, but please do it as soon as you can. So I can, if I can, if it's not there, I can't comment on it. And I think you're paying me to do that, to comment on it, I think. So you can tell me differently. Um, there's an overall assessment, uh, which is 20%. And I'm simply taking the last case that's in the book, Informing Decisions, and working it yourself. And I will give you a template. I will give you different data. I will give you a couple of different uh, 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 requirements that the decision maker might want. You're basically going to be using uh, 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 data and all of the models of the course to design a self-insurance system and approach for uh, workers' comp for a company. That's that's a particular thing I'm uh, asking you to do. Uh, I mean, we could be designing, uh, uh, you know, facility locations for uh, a distribution system. We could be designing uh, uh, configuration for production planning. We could be designing a financial contract, okay? Uh, we could be doing any one of these things using exactly the same tools. Uh, that's called an isomorphism. It, uh, the tools uh, you'll find have the same shape, just different content across different decisions. Uh, the uh, A to F system is here. Well, that's 20%. There we go. I think that all adds up to 100%. You know, 60 plus 20, 80 plus 20. Okay, it does. Uh, and here's the course outline for uh, this course. Um, I divided it up cleanly into three major sections. First, the spreadsheet engineering, building very simple models. And at the most, uh, we're, gonna, we're actually going to do an optimization. Uh, but it's going to be an eyeball optimization that will be able to use two really important uh, Excel functions uh, called index and match. I do not ever use VLOOKUP, if anybody knows what that is, or HLOOKUP. I found those to be some of the most operationally dangerous 
lookups that uh, I've come across in my work over many decades. Um, uh, index match is the most pliable tool you'll find uh, for uh, uh, locating something like the most profitable price. That will be one of our first things we'll do. Linear programming um, uh, and then applying it is the uh, week three and four. Optimization one and two. Uh, simulation one and two. Um, talks initially about real probability. Uh, uh, making decisions with real probability. Uh, you'll actually see an example of that if you go through that first 40 some odd minute a weak nil, uh, you know, teaser uh, uh, for the course. What's the decision? Uh, where I I uh, basically have two competing ways of looking at decisions. Um, uh, go head to head. It's it's, uh, it's uh, throw the puck down and have at it. Uh, and uh, there's a structure there. And uh, it's exactly the same structure as real probability for real people. <clears throat> uh, that starts us off with simulation. And I'm going to put you through a waiting time problem, which is a very, very useful uh, container for a lot of kinds of problems, not just waiting times. Um, anything with categories. Uh, and then I'm going to um, drag you through a forecasting of extreme of extremes. Uh, this this will this is not your basic stats course. Uh, this is real stats. Uh, we know what's happening uh, normally. That's a normal curve. What we don't know what's going to happen is off the normal curve. It's it's all the tails, the thick tails, the things that go bump in the night. I mean that's where the action always has been. We budget for everything else. We try to ensure those tail events, and even then there's some that we just cannot ensure, hedge, anything. Okay, and then the compendium is week seven. Here's the analyst uh, integrity uh, and conduct, um, uh, following, of course, the academic integrity, uh, and, then, uh, and then the analyst conduct is what's required in this course as well uh, goes through the analytical process of planning collection collection is really important analysis sorry for the formatting issues there i have no idea why those happen <laughs> and production and dissemination dissemination is the hardest part of the job it it you think you think 90 percent of your time is doing everything else no the next 90 percent of your time <laughs> is dissemination um, uh, with some with some rules there. Speak truth to power. Don't stovepipe anything. Going right back to Thomas Aquinas. Okay, share what you learn. Okay, but make sure you have permission to share. By the way, be very careful about that. Um, I, I can't tell you how many perpetual non disclosure agreements I I've, I've signed. I've forgotten, but they all hold. Students. If, if you believe you have a disability, then you have a disability. Um, get help, get accommodation, talk to me about it. I've got a bunch of disabilities myself. Um, <laughs> and uh, we manage these, okay? None of us are born perfect at all. Yeah, especially my eyes these days. So I'm gonna leave you with this. Um, uh, watch out for more and um, uh, good luck. Don't, oh, ah, there's no luck in this course. Plan your time around it. If you're having problems planning your time, let me know and I will help you. Okay. I know it's seven weeks and I know life gets in the way all the time. Life gets in the way. No, the course is getting in the way of life, actually. That's a, okay. So, you know, half full or half empty, you, you, you pick it. Have the discussion with me as early on as you think there's going to be a problem with meeting the timing of this course. And um, uh, we'll work a plan around that, okay? Uh, you have all my contact details all the way up the top here. There we go. 
uh, my phone is mobile. It's an iPhone and uh, accepts all sorts of interesting things. Uh, I have SMS and MMS, so um, uh, you may text me, all right? Just let me know who you are and what course you're in, please. It helps, and I'll save your details, and I'll know who it is when you call me again, all right? And it's better to text me before calling me because I'm often in meetings like you, and text becomes a really useful tool. Okay. Um, anyways, I'll let you go. If you'll let me go for a few minutes here. And uh, I'm going to continue preparing uh, the fall 2022 uh, version of this course. Take care. Uh, uh, thanks very much for your kind attention. And uh, look forward to working with you all this term.